Uh, welcome to episode two of my 64 changes and uh, we've got a special episode. We're going to meet my brother, Jeff Dion. All right. So this week's episode, I'm calling maybe logic. I want to make sure that uh, part of the, um, the, 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 whether it's the aging and throwing a coin to decide, and we don't know what, how those coins going to fall. Right. Uh, it's very random. Uh, we don't know. And, and one of my great heroes, I mentioned uh, Timothy Leary in, in the uh, first episode. Well, next to Leary, uh, the person, my children have had to hear me quote almost every day, if not, multiple times well according to robert anton wilson or whatever so uh but he he, he stressed uh, it was a great hero of mine he stressed that you can't speak matter of factually about anything you can't measure now i make my living uh, you know over the years as a security guy and my hands-on stuff is mostly packet analysis that's wireshark on the screen here and with wireshark i always say look i can speak matter of factually about the packets i measure but I can't measure all the packets. And today it's getting worse and worse. I need AI to do my packet analysis. So um, the answer is maybe a lot, you know, um, and we'll make sure we we say that we remain agnostic or something to that effect, it's some superposition. And I have a Wikipedia at the bottom of Bob always talked about uh, E prime, a language that uh, removes uh, that, that, bias that is is isness of the language so you would you wouldn't say this is that you say well from where i am right now under this context it appears that way you know so we want to stay that way now we're also going to meet my big brother jeff he's uh, always there he's been there before me and um he's there almost every week and i, I you know i'm lucky to make it every other month uh i do live further away uh but i'm going to try and get again this year i'm really going to push it um and and Tom came in and he he said yeah when we'll talk about the order of the Yi Jing why why is this number one and why is that two and why is that you know what was it, what? and uh, Tom said he asked ChatGPT to map out consciousness in the context of the Yi Jing and it actually started at least you know we got into the first two it agreed with the first two of the Yi Jing but was it poison I don't know uh, but it, when he brought that up Jeff said oh yeah you know I I never really got into the Yi Jing you know you were supposed to show me or something so i made it like it was my fault so jeff i'm gonna try and make up that <laughs> let you know my my uh wire shark packet analyst view we do some uh push hands and push uh, head and push push neck uh push shoulders uh, i didn't get any of the footage of the shoulder stuff that was really good but it was about you know a lot of the tai chi powers uh, i'm trying to get that <laughs> that extra next level but it is from the opening of the joints instead of tightening up so we test that you know, with and it's a really good exercise. Just I think at my age to to know my shoulders can still do that. Um, but uh, we'll we'll go through some of that. I've got some footage of that, and then um, I got there early today. So Jeff and I actually walked through the sixty four ourselves and talked and flapped our gums. But I'll show that at the end too. So. Yeah, so uh, Jeff Dion has been part of Tom Up the Gross Marshall Posture. And I realized last uh, episode, I showed this um, uh, picture, but I didn't explain it. So uh, in the picture is Tom receiving his 10th degree black belt. And uh, I'm in the back behind him. And then next to me in the hat is Jeff Dion. And he's been there forever. He's an artist. He painted the original logo when I got to the school. I found that out. My father was an artist. We just kind of hit it off. And he's always been a great big brother to me. Uh, always uh, coaching me along, inspiring me to get off my butt. And at the same time, picking on me and making fun of me in the way brothers do. Until I... <laughs> and he also, again, uh, reminded me that I I failed to explain that, so I'm going to do that right now. All right, so a deep dive into the I Ching from a packet analyst view. So if I could sniff out hexagrams on the uh, with my wire shark, they would look they would be grouped out in in three bit words, three three I should say three bit nibbles with a six bit word. Uh, and so uh, we've all seen it. We've all seen the yin yang diagram. Didn't know it was called tai chi, right? And we've all seen the three. You know, if you've eaten in a Chinese restaurant or someplace, don't tell me you didn't see that. That's called the bakwa. And both of these come from the Yi the, the, the earliest you know, known graphing of these things that, that I've heard of, uh, potentially over 3,000 years ago, right? Maybe even longer. So um, the 
solid line represents a yang. So when we when we represent uh, a trigram, we're representing basically three tai chi's, but instead of with a circle, right? The um, uh, Random number generators, very important in information security, especially you make up a password, right? You don't want a, a, a dictionary word. So you just make up something really random. And in software, we always worry that they're not really random. We, we only call them pseudo random number generators, but a hardware number generator, such as flipping a coin, is considered random. So when you're playing, whatever you want to call it, the I Ching, we'll consult it, whatever you want to use the term, uh, we're using a random number generator and then we're just applying meaning to it. And does it matter? I, I, well, you tell me. <laughs> so uh, I like to say that when you, when you, uh, um, well, from Sad Guru, if, <laughs> if you pursue logic, you know, you develop some intuition. But if you pursue intuition, you're going to develop hallucinations. So again, maybe logic. Let's not get too caught up. Let's not believe our hallucinations. So again, the numbering of the 64 hexagrams, and uh, I'll play that <laughs> with Tom uh, uh, showing, you know, how you had chat GPT figure out why these orders do make sense or something. But again, it, it's, it's uh, the ordering. I, I like to think of it as the ASCII table. It, it, it it was arranged that way because there was a meeting and people agreed I wasn't there and we use it. Now, if you can come up with a better order, by all means, you know, keep an open mind there, but that's basically how it works. So for each trigram, there's a, a basic representation. It's Orion's belt. It's a big dipper. It's heaven. It's earth, right? The, the most creative, the most receptive. It's all three yang lines. It's all three yin lines, whatever. But then in the, as we mix them around, there could be other conditions. And, and they've come up with uh, eight, eight basic things in nature. Um, and, and I like to point out that the difference between water and the lake is that the lake is stagnant. You don't have to worry about getting swept up in a stream and getting washed downstream. But if you saw water on top of water, <laughs> that could be a dangerous situation, right? So uh, there's a difference. In, 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 now there's a uh, some Tai Chi uh, interpretations of what the basic techniques are to the each trigram. So maybe uh, as I go through this, I'll get better at this, but I'll be able to recognize an attack and say that's one of eight basic attacks. And now I have eight basic choices of how to do, to react to that. You know, let's see what sort of the eight I pick or something like that. Yeah. So in the hexagrams, you would apply the, the uh, some things on top of something else, right? You'd get the two trigrams. Now, two to the six is going to give us 64 possible changes. Like, now it's going to be 64. And uh, uh, there are 64 basic change descriptions of nature in the book. So, uh, and and sometimes, you know, the the we looked at the trigrams representing whatever a mountain, but we could also use the eight trigrams in, in like a Confucian way they do in the book to, to say, well, the, there's the father and the mother. And then there are whatever the oldest son, middle son, youngest son, oldest daughter, middle daughter, younger daughter. So what happens when the father is in a position with this versus that, you know, things like that. So they describe and there's commentaries again by, by uh, 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 Confucius and, and many others over the years and, and Richard Wilhelm and uh, uh, Carl Jung and, and others. So, you, you know, you, you can interpret it the way you want. Do you see a big dipper? But, you know, I, I tend to see things. All right, so we, we're going to throw coins as a random number generator. This is how you play the Yi Jing. Maybe logic, right? When, when I get a hexagram that says, this is the condition that's going to change to that, maybe. <laughs> so, and now, you have to believe, is it just a coincidence? Well, when it comes to coincidence, I call myself a, a, a quantum animus. I, I tend to think that everything's just a coincidence there's no rhyme or reason to anything and everything there, 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 there's the other there's no coincidence everything happens for a reason um i'm willing to stay in that superposition of both <laughs> so this schrodinger's cat is dead and alive right i'm gonna stay dead and alive uh now 
again, I mentioned that hardware generators, if you're flipping a coin, it's considered truly random. So we're going to make a, a random selection and just apply a meaning. And, and maybe it's a coincidence, and it is. And then, no, it's not. Um, if you get three heads, now the thing about it, I got two to the third, there should be eight values, but there's only four really things I can get because three heads in a row, that can happen one in eight times. Two heads in a tail, that can happen three different ways. Two tails and a head can happen three different ways. Three tails, that can only happen one way if all of them are tails, right? So there's really only three values. Now, if there's if there's three heads or three tails, and it's only one in an eight chance, it's likely to change. So we call that a changing line. Six is a yin, but ready to change to a yang. When you're drawing it out, you're going to draw out, you're going to throw coins, you're going to draw out the values for a line. But when you see a, cha- a six, you're going to go, oh, that's a, it's a yin now, but it's going to become a yang, right? And then you'll build them up line one through six. So again, when you throw the coins, you're going to derive the current state stateful inspection and and a, a uh, suggested future state you know? and so um this is the game of the ej this is i i had an idea you know hey i think i clicked on something <laughs> might have been ransomware i'm worried <laughs> what should i do i don't know how useful it's going to be in that situation but I certainly gain a lot of wisdom from it. And uh, I'm not alone. You know, that four-state logic uh, is, is how DNA works. And I remember reading a, a book, uh, DNA in the I Ching, uh, like in the 80s, and, and being blown away by the guy's suggestion. And since then, when I went to get a, a picture of the cover, I noticed it's very well. Uh, so there's a number of books out there now tying into that four-state logic. Again, you can have six, seven, eight, or nine, or whatever, and that's how DNA works. And some people think we could map out the code of life, you know, maybe we could program our AIs as they uh, try to further understand how DNA works. And, and I also want to throw some love to uh, Timothy Leary. He he was a big Yi Jing fan, obviously, uh, and it showed up at, at, at least in two um, really cool books for me. One was The High Priest. It was an autobiography he did in, in 68. And he did it, obviously, he was going through rough times. If you don't know his story there, I'll save that. But um, he was obviously just throwing the coins to help him understand or give a context to what he was doing, even if it's just random and i thought he handled it beautifully you know um uh, and i felt for him but it was more of a drama about his life and that's the high priest but in the game of life he blew me away and i can't unsee this this thing it's like the big dipper he took the periodic table of elements <laughs> just to have sorry, some some scientific grounding and, and as well as the, uh, the the octaves of music you know the eight uh, uh, notes on the scale or seven and an octave of scale and uh then mapped it out to the I Ching. he mapped it out to the um uh, uh to the tarot cards to astrology it's just amazing so uh i thought it was great and and you know I, I know he's gotten some bad drama about his life but picking on him i always say is it's like picking on einstein because he was a terrible husband is going well i'm not even going to pay attention to relativity why should i <laughs> Leary's lifestyle might not be what you like. I don't know. But his theories to me are like relativity. So I, I think I think the future is going to be kinder to talk to Tim. All right. So uh, that, that's this episode. I'm just going to play some videos. So again, you're going to see some push hand stuff that Tom is running us through today. And then me and Jeff goofing off through the, uh, I mean, we kind of made it through, but we'd always talk and run our mouths. Uh, and then the next episode, I'm, I wanted to touch on some history. And I, I love this, this book here, the uh, essence of Tai Chi Chuan, a uh, very influential book is an uh, old poetry uh, uh, stuff of, of ancient times, you know, and we're not really sure how old 200 years, 1200 years we're not sure so uh, enjoy so what are we up to this morning yeah where that's where i wanted to ask you to i remember to bring my to turn and, on the review thing and i figured we'll just so take here, it where you want to go it's an interesting point so i i um i asked chat gpt okay if the egn was a map uh of uh, 
developing consciousness, uh, mapful consciousness, where would I start? What would be the first step? You change or the, well, it was almost like ChatGPT was the you change. So, because that can goes, oh, start at hexagram one, um, the creator. Oh, that's great, you know, because you always need um, inspiration to start any journey. Okay? Uh, so, you want to be on your best um, uh, and open your mind to everything. Uh, then, um, well, what would step two be? In step two, oh, that would be the receptive, okay? because um, you, uh, for every extension, you need also to have, be receptive to new ideas and new expressions. Okay? So, uh, it's a good, good way to start our second great start, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great way to start this second video here. Yeah. Ideally, the upper body won't that need to lean. It can, but we'd rather, we'd, yeah, we'd rather be able to, that's it. And I'd rather be able to split that out and I didn't have to lean to do that. Yeah. 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 I don't want to go too far because you're going to loop right back in again. So if you loop back in, you know, you know, try to go over top, you know what I mean, with your, that's it, nice, nice move. Uh, you know, try a little more distance on the move. Uh huh. Try a little closer on the move. That's it. Okay. I'll steer it in. Up over a little bit on the range. Okay. Cool. We started at this point. So, in a sense, we were just going around, right? So, let's just go around. Yeah. Off, just going around, right? And then I split, okay? I move forward with the elbow, okay? You shift, but you sit back. You now push my elbow to the side, yeah, in position, I pull back, okay? I push, you sit back, sit and split. Then you move forward with the elbow, and I sit, okay? I push it, we pull, and then we shift forward again, yeah. Off, two, Three and shift in uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's a relaxed voice. So you got to be yeah, just that's it. Yeah, it's too tight. It's too tight. Relax. Yeah. Let's see. Here, so I got spring, but yet I could I could escape ahead of it. Yeah, so if I'm going here, yeah, go ahead of me. Yeah, let's see that. Yeah. So you kind of lead me a little bit, you know? Uh, yeah. So you know where it's going, you just at that yeah. point take the lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pay attention, pay attention. Uh, that's it, go the other way. You can't go, ah, see? So now, so what happens is while I'm here, I'm in a I'm in a kind of a, a containing position, you know. Yeah, so you know, so I'm, I'm going to get the head dash. Yeah, you know, you definitely want to be aware for that guy and all that, you know. But here, if you see a block, just go the other way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, nice little jump. Uh, the person on this side is going to off in their back hinge. Okay. The person on that side is going to pull hands on them. So you're going to start your push. Okay. So. I start to rock it, and I'm almost like in a play the fiddle move, and I'm going to rock underneath and come back to your front hand. Okay? As you come in here, yeah, so you're controlling the elbow, and what you're going to do is you're going to roll both arms underneath. Both. Under, no, both arms underneath my arms. So as you move. Yeah. So in here, I'll rock it, and then I start to push both a roll. Uh huh. There's your move. That's it. Yeah. So there's your move. Uh huh. Let you try it. So I mentioned that I started with Tom in uh, in, in eighty two. Yeah, I met him in eighty one. Uh, but when I started, there was a guy already there. Jeff Dion, my, my senior brother. And I was thinking, a, a, a few Martin, things came Martin to mind. Senior. A few things came to mind. One, he's always been a big brother to me. He's, till this day, he encourages me to work out when I want to sit on my ass. Come on, let's do the sword form. Let's do something. 
but you also outside of Tai Chi have been a good big brother to me in that some of the worst times of my life, he has been there like a brother teasing me and making fun of me until I snap out of it just to spite him. <laughs> but but I do want to say that I met Tom in 81 also. April, oh, so you April, met him. And I didn't start the 64 until 82. So you were probably only a couple weeks ahead of me. Yeah. At the most. At the, at most. the most. So I am barely a bigger brother. But you also, though, what really struck me out was I was pointed to the, 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 um, the logo on the window. Yeah. And I was told that Jeff was an artist and he painted that. You know, my father was an artist and yeah. had a job as a sign painter. That was how he made his living. Yeah. So, and of course, yeah. my dad was an artist. Also. And his father is a wonderful artist and he is a great artist. Rembrandt and so. was an artist also. I've heard that. Yeah. We're going to work into our March Brothers routines, and he has been my my uh, uh, harp out of my chico many times. But we'll we'll move on. Wait a minute, right here. Is that better? Stop. Wherever you want to go. What works better for you? It don't matter. I'm following you. No, no, no. I should follow you. Oh, all right. All right. I'll follow you. So, so you're you're over here. I'm over here. I tell you, from watching uh, the Ching Man Ching I, uh, and all these other people doing it, yeah. I'm questioning a lot of the 64 already, like that first move. I don't think that was supposed to be a ward off. I think this is the first ward off. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's... Yeah, this is the way the, the 37 did. Right. And I the know. first one is just picking up the ball. But it, that, what, what makes the 37 correct? Oh, it's, well, I was watching it versus the 108. You know, Tom showed us that thing, and then I'm watching how... All compares to Cheng Min, or Yang Cheng Fu's 108. I think that's the biggest change right there. What's that? The left foot moves forward, whereas with the 37. You've been doing the 37. I didn't even, you know, I watched videos last week. I did not actually go through the 37. I watched it from my couch. <laughs> Let's see. But it was very subtle, and I like a lot of that. I'm watching a lot of Adam Mizzy, too. Jewish guy. Mizzy, I was just thinking he's got an Australian accent. Oh, Mizzy, I guess. He's an Australian accent. Yes, they did. You can Brushing the twister. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's why I'm following you. Yeah, that, that's Tom's uh, modification, I think. And I went back to the old school. I did good job on this. It clouded on the screen. And I also know they do as many as nine of those things. We're only doing two. So two. Right? Yeah. I think that's what we always used to do. We always did two, and then Tom added two the other way, and I never adopted that properly. It's just because he was old and drunk by the time. That's the yeah. He never got that old, you know. I think he died in '72. That's one of the controversies. It's also well, I question, you know, what makes his 
you know, correct. Well, it's just with his performance that he was able to throw people. And people are like, wow, how did you do that? And he goes, well, this is what I studied. You know, and that's kind of like where uh, Adam Misner is. When I watch him, he is amazing. I mean, he's, he's not just standing up. He's lying on a bench and he's pushing people around. Yeah, just to get that sad guru stretch. Yeah, I do love that. Um, okay, cool. Let me ask you this. Um, right there at the end, after we turn, do you do uh, punch down? Yeah, I do the straight 